There's a family in our driveway. It's probably the neighbors. But y'all scared of a family? Hi, can I help you? Zora, put your shoes on. If you want to get crazy, we can get crazy. Exactly like us. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Sub Beacon, sponsored by Quip Electric Toothbrush and Robin Hood. I'm Victor Manis, along with Sonny Bunch and Jonathan V. Last. I'd like to remind you the Sub Beacon is available on iTunes and Google Play. Just look at a podcast and search for Sub Beacon. You'll easily find us. Please subscribe, tell your friends, and leave a review. Gentlemen, how are we? JVL, what is going on? Boys, we have presents. It sounded like props earlier, and I didn't want to uh, jump the gun on that. So I what, what's received a package Ooh. addressed to the three of us Uh-oh. at my home last week shortly after we had taped. Mm -hmm. And I bring it in now for you. There are gifts for all three of us. Oh, my goodness. Should I be scared or... Oh, wow. A T-shirt. A T-shirt from the Sub Beacon Expanded Universe. Oh, oh boy. Look at that. They have their own T-shirt That's beautiful. They have their own T-shirt. And that's just a warm-up gift. What does it say on the back? On the back of the T-shirt, it says... Dudes chatting since 2016, quote, I'm sure it's fine. But the, again, that's the warm up. That's the, the, warm-up. the main attraction. Oh, you're kidding me. Look at that. <laughs> a, a t-shirt with got gout. In, in, in the, the got milk font. In the got in the milk font. And then on the back, gout watch. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> These are from the Nikachu. Oh, the, the Nikachu. Nikachu, yes. Who is a, very, a key member. I don't remember where he is on the org chart. But a key member of the subspanded, sub beacon, sorry, expanded universe, and in credit, he sent them for all of us. They're fantastic. They're great. Wait, do we do we each have one of these shirts? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, wait, so there's there's we each got two shirts. We each got two shirts. Man, it's like Christmas. Thank you to Nikachu, um, and I yeah. I'm hoping that the Nikachu will make these available for sale oh, for man. listeners who would get like it. to Put go get them. Yeah. You know and what? So Nikachu, if you will yeah. email us about them, I will tweet out. No, I won't mm-hmm. do it. But Vic and Sonny will tweet out the link to <laughs> the store. I don't know which totally. whether it's Cafe Press or whatever. But they're both great. We'll take a very small cut. The, What's it? The got gout. Fifty percent. Got gout is brilliant. I haven't seen that anywhere, so I I really hope that's, that's original because that could get that could be hot. That could got be gout. the next. That's gonna be the next. You thing. could see this like up in Brooklyn oh, becoming a real oh, thing. Oh my! Oh, especially there when everyone's eating sweetbreads up there. They're gonna love it. That's what I've got, guys. And veal that's very nice. Thank that's you, Nikachu. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the Nikachu. The Nikachu. Thank you. Is it just Nikachu or the Nikachu? I mean, oh, his Twitter Nikachu. handle is the, the Nikachu, oh. but I mean, when we speak, when we address him, mm-hmm. do you address him just as Mister Nikachu I would say or the Honorable the, Sir Nikachu? The, okay, yeah. I like the. the. I like, Chav I like Nikachu. The. Well, I don't. I I'd, I'd have. To, I don't. I I wouldn't feel comfortable calling him a Chav. <laughs> There's nothing wrong That's, with it. It's an it's insult to call someone a Chav. No, we've taken it back. No, we no, you haven't. It's still an insult. <laughs> Sonny, how are you? Um, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't really have anything to talk about in terms of my life. Well, I was, I had one question about yes. your life. How are your, how are you feeling? How are your sides feeling? How is your rib cage yeah, feeling? Yeah, it's good. I, it feels better this week. I can't remember if we talked about this last week, but I, I, I ran, did. I ran into, uh, it's like the most middle-aged injury that I've ever suffered. I was chasing my daughter around the house, you know, playing, playing a game. And uh, I ran into one of those like swinging gates, but I didn't run into it in the way it swings. I ran into it kind of perpendicular to it, and I thought I had broken a rib. I thought I, I thought I had, like it knocked the wind out of me. I thought I had straight up cracked a rib. Is your uh, wife beating you? <laughs> I walked into a door. I walked into a door <laughs> last night, uh, uh, and it, it, it like a day later, it felt fine. It felt fine. I actually like went to the gym, worked yeah. out, and mm-hmm. and then like three or four days later, it was just agonizingly painful. Like I couldn't bend down to tie my shoes. I couldn't like bend down to pick things up. I was. It got to the point where when I was taking deep breaths, it actually hurt. 
Uh, but it feels better now. It feels better. So it's whatever, whatever uh, it was. Okay. Whatever that, it was. That means it wasn't. <laughs> it means it was not a broken. It was rib. probably not a broken. No. Rib. It was contusion. Probably, it maybe contusion. A, maybe right. a bruised rib. Maybe like a sprained muscle in the rib cage. You're breathing. Know. You're breathing fine now. I'm. I mean, I'm breathing as well as I. You're still coughing up do. blood or no more? Uh, well, the peeing, the blood in oh, the urine has really? stopped. Well, this is so unreal. That's, oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> that's good to know. Good. Uh, but yeah, no, I feel I feel better. I feel better. Um, that's. Uh, Was there anything else on your mind? No, I. Well, I just wanted to give. Uh, we're not going to talk about it this week, uh, and we probably want to talk about it next week. But I just wanted to give a quick shout out to a movie called Dragged Across Concrete, which I reviewed last week in conjunction with Us, which we will be talking about this week. Um, and uh, I like a lot. It's the best movie I've seen so far this year. It's from S. Craig Zoller, who is. Uh, kind of a he's an indie filmmaker who is best known for two relatively spectacularly brutal movies called uh, one is Bone Tomahawk which is a, a western horror film and the other is Brawl and Cell Block 99 which is uh, the Vince Vaughn movie the Vince Vaughn movie which is about a guy who uh, goes to prison because it, it's I it does I'm not going to explain the whole plot, but it, it these are both like kind of noted noted reactionary films. Uh, the the villain yes. the villain in Brawl and Cell Block 99 is a, a Hispanic drug lord who hires a Korean abortionist to uh, forcibly abort Vince Vaughn's child if Vince oh. Vaughn does not do the things that he wants. Oh. Uh, so it, it, in in and Bone Tomahawk the, the very dark the villains are the villains are these. Uh, a cannibalistic, uh, like subhuman uh, Native American tribe. They, there's a there's a native character that's. I'm sorry, <laughs> haven't they suffered enough? Well, this is why. This is uh, these these films are very much uh, in in the kind of throwback. And dragged across concrete NBC. is also problematic. So isn't dragged it? across Cron- concrete stars Mel Gibson uh, and Vince Vaughn oh, as okay. That's as a great duo. Cops as cops who oh. get arrested for uh, physically abusing a minority uh, suspect allegedly, uh, or and they're the heroes. Oh, they get they get the well, not really. I mean the the. <laughs> So they, those are two of the main characters. There's another main character who is not in any of the advertising and is getting kind of downplayed in the uh, the the reviews of the film. Who's a he's an African American ex con who is out of prison and he's he's uh, part of this heist that Mel Gibson and Vince Vaughn then decide they want to rip off. So it's it's there's there's it's like varying shades of bad basically. Anyway, the movie's extremely good uh, and it is it is. Again, quite reactionary. Uh, Don Johnson plays a character in the film. He plays Lieutenant Calvert, who has a whole rant about PC culture and how the worst thing you can be called these days is a racist, even if it's not true. And it's fantastic. It's just fantastically, <laughs> amusingly uh, reactionary. So I, I highly recommend it. It's on VOD now. It's playing at a few theaters around. I actually I watched a screener link, and then I went to go see it in a theater. It's playing in one theater in the region. It's playing at the ArcLight Bethesda. So I went up to the ArcLight Bethesda for the first time. Very nice. Well, I, I, I saw your I saw your review, and then I was wondering when it says VOD, does that mean like Netflix, Video Amazon? Video on demand. Yes, no, it that's... means like it means net. Well, I mean, usually it generally means uh, pay Buy it on video. Amazon. Mm. Yeah, okay. you can you can rent mm-hmm. Vudu, mm-hmm. rent it oh, on yeah. Amazon right. or YouTube okay. or Hulu or mm-hmm. Vudu. Or... You know what? You know what? Uh, two movies that interest me. Uh, one on Netflix now is Dirt, which is the Motley Crue biopic. The Motley Crue biopic. The also problematic Motley Crue. I'd love to see that. I think that would be interesting to talk about. I know Aaron Harrison is very excited. Oh, I'm this. sure he is. And uh, the other one, of course, on March 29 is The Highwaymen. Have you seen that one yet or no? That's is, the Kevin Costner, Woody Harrelson. Is that not out? I thought I had thought on that On Netflix. Already, you know what? It's, it's out. Now. It's out now, but it comes to Netflix on March oh, okay. 29. Okay. So I'm excited about I'm ex- that. I'm excited for that one. I, I saw I, I saw a bunch great. of like uh, my liberal film critic friends kind of making fun of this. Like, oh, what if it was Bonnie and Clyde, but the cops were the good guys? And I was like, the cops <laughs> were the good guys because Bonnie and Clyde were bad. They were ki- yeah, Bonnie and Clyde were killed. murderous villains. Yeah, but who have yeah. been romanticized Warren, by Warren you, Beatty you and Faye Dunaway? You disgusting boomers! Yeah, well, there you go. Okay, good. Anyway, dragged across concrete. See it, Victorino. Yes. How JBL. was your weekend? Oh my gosh, I had the most wonderful weekend because, uh, as you know, Sunday was a gorgeous day in the Washington area, and the weather was great and was sunny. There was hardly a cloud in the sky, and uh, I haven't played golf in, in in many years, and I got invited to play by. Our friend, our sub-beacon friend, Dan, uh, who invited me to play at TPC Potomac. 
Woo. That's a public course. That is not right? a public course. <laughs> they no. It's only one yeah. of the best public no. courses yes. in the county. Yeah, it's right up there with Haynes no. Point. What? It's right up there with Haynes Point and uh, so people who aren't golf people. Oh, right, right, can you right. explain what this is? Mm-hmm. TPC. T- TPC. TPC is a uh, is a corporate chain of golf courses. Supposedly, some of them are public, uh, but uh, the really great ones obviously are private, like TPC Sawgrass, where they just had uh, the tournament uh, the other weekend, and uh, TPC stands, TPC stands for the. Players, players championship yeah i think so i forget what the c is but definitely the or, yeah something like that and uh so there's tpc sawgrass and then up here there's tpc potomac so it is a pro level uh course 18 holes designed by um master architects oh, and golf it's players not, it's not a mini golf course it is, no it's it not putt putt no no it's not johnny uh and uh they're in fact in june they're playing the quick and loans tournament there so I got to play on the course where uh, in June I'll get to see the same players uh, actually play golf there, like real people, as opposed to what I did, which was murdered my way through 18 holes. What tees did you hit off? Oh, a silver. So in the middle, is I would the old person tees? No, no. I think that's like middle. Okay. Be, oh, old is all the way, I think, in the front. Old might be in front of ladies. In front of Tur- ladies? Yeah. Tournament Players Club. Thank you. Tournament. There you go. Tournament Players Club. And... Uh, the back Dan teams. was listening to that whole thing. Yeah, I know. Driving say sorry about it. I forgot. What's wrong the with you? Course championship. Uh, so I was glad that we didn't go from all the way back because I would have been basically driving from uh, that tee to the ladies' tee. That would be my first <laughs> shot. And then from there. Uh, it was a brutal, brutal course. How long are you off the tee? Uh, like, how far do I? Yes. How far is your how initial far drive? You drive? How know. far can you drive the ball? Uh, I on would average. Say, on average. Okay, not counting... Uh, last Sunday, between short 150 to 200. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm missing something in my swing. That's pretty good. Isn't it's it? okay. It depends. Uh, this was more like 100. If you're, if you're hitting, if you're hitting this off. was more like 100, 150 on Sunday. If you're hitting off the ladies' tees, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, the worst part is like, oh, you know, and it's great. And I brought my uh, father-in-law, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Bob Dwyer, and uh, the other person, our fourth son, was Dan's friend, Dr. Ed Wu, who's chief vascular surgeon at Washington MedStar. So really, it was a very accomplished foursome. Yeah, two of doctors how many, and a doctor's the, son. Question, and at the top of their game. Question. Four people. <laughs> did you, did yes, you, Sonny. Did you catch any dangling modifiers? I, <laughs> while they were saying, yeah, while they, they as you know. There was, there was an emergency on the course. Somebody was like, quick, we need a copy <laughs> editor. I, I just knew that in case anything happened to me vascularly or urologically that I was good <laughs> for 18 holes. Uh, and But they were very nice and very patient uh, with me. Also, in my defense, the course was being aerated, so it wasn't this. Oh, well, that's it's, the problem. You know, that's why. But I did one highlight, and it was one, was sinking what uh, Dr. Wu said was about a 70-foot putt. It was very that's far. A good, that's a good putt. Yeah, and, and then it was all downhill from there. The, I was going to say this, uh, JVL, the, the worst was, you know, oh, you get, to, it, it, there's, it's all GPS, so it tells you how many yards you're away based on your cart, but it's cart path only, so you have to leave. And that means me walking all the way across the course to the woods or wherever. And uh, then, but then you would get to like a par three. Oh, thank goodness it's a par three. And it's like 200 yards for the par three. And what I really wanted to do is like take my driver, but, you know, I so what, did. What, what are you hitting off of? Three a two hundred yard par three. Are you? Is it I'm your using, three iron? I'm or? using a five wood, and I was okay. obsessed with it because I, I I was so bad. Could you reach with a five wood from there? No, and I was so bad <laughs> with a five wood, but I was obsessed with fi- trying to get it trying to get How it. How many did you put right. in the drink before you got on uh, the green? Uh, um, I I put, I put a few in. I lost all my balls by the end. Question. I was borrowing my father in law. Question. Did you did you knowing that you were going? Some beacon quotes is going to love that one. No. <laughs> Knowing that you were going to mm-hmm. a very fancy golf course, yes, did you make a special trip to the store to get up some like Pro V ones? <laughs> no, no, I wanted did you, to. Did I'll you tell get you what some, I wanted to do? Did you get some fancy golf balls, or were you using the crap you usually use? The, I well, there were I know I, they, they were pretty good balls that I had, uh, but uh, again, all of it was was gone. What I wanted to do was go into the uh, uh, you know the, the the club store, the, the club house, shop. the pro shop, and buy. You know, things that say, you know, TPC Potomac. I totally forgot. I got so excited. I forgot. You know, you didn't I, buy a new uh, golf golf glove. I could have used a new golf glove. I took a picture Vic of that. Me a, Vic sends me a picture of I'm not I'm out of my element here or something like that. <laughs> and it just it's his, his golf 
it's his the glove that he wears on his hand while he's playing looks like it has exploded. Right. It is. It, 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 it is like, like a could, hobo's glove. Could, it was, could, it was, there's it like was a rough. whole flap. You yeah. can see your palm through your golf club <laughs> yes. because the the yeah. leather stitching is ripped up. Yeah. What did yeah, you, you shoot? Could. Oh, I oh believe me, I didn't take. I, I was not uh, keeping score. I was. I think there were a couple holes that I got a double bogey on, and I was pleased about that. They're all. I'm sure if Dan's listening now, he's like, "That's totally not true. Maybe one hole." Uh, was and uh, but what did the other guys in your foursome shoot? They were oh, here's an interesting thing. They made it so comfortable for us that a lot of the times they said, you know, this is March. This is like a time to get out all the kinks. So they were taking a lot of mulligans too. Like, oh, I'm just gonna take you know maybe three shots to get on the green. So it was totally relaxed and casual. And then we get to the ninth hole, and then uh, you know, Doctor Boo gets on the phone. Like, oh, what do you guys want for lunch? Anything, you know, whatever you want. And I'm like, well, what are they? You know, <laughs> my father in is like, uh. Do they have a turkey sandwich? You know, and he's like, of course they have it. Uh, what kind of bread? Do you want the bread toasted? I mean, it was everything. And then they come over in the cart with, you know, I, it was the greenest lettuce I've ever seen. And, and the fries were great. And then, of course, you know, I had my name on the on the locker. The locker room. The locker room. the locker room. Because you sent us a picture of your own brass plate I on your I locker. I, well, I didn't. Again, again I took very few pictures because I didn't want to be like uh, the tourist. A tourist. <laughs> no, I didn't want to be like, you know, Rodney Dangerous. Remember Rodney Dangerous? Hey, friend? look at this. Right now, Rodney Dangerous. Hey, whoa. It's hey, whoa, hey, what's whoa. with the picture? Hey, it's a parking lot. That's what he says, right? Because he's taking a picture of the club parking lot. You can get that on YouTube. Hey, woo. It's a like, Wang. Hey, Wang. It's like, he goes, this is my friend. This is my friend, Mr. Wang. No offense. Do you remember that one? No offense. Did you wear plaid pants? I was going to do it. You know, like me and Al Cervic. Al Cervic, right? That was, uh, it's a great. So all I could think of was Wang. This this was real life Caddyshack. It was, it was real life Caddyshack. And so I didn't want to be Wang. Hey, it's a parking lot. So I I didn't do that. I took and Dan I was is the to Chevy be, Chase character. Yes. Oh, he totally is. Right, total. Is Dan is totally that. And uh, and so, I, but my, at the end, my my final was like, take take the nameplate. You know, take it take it home. I said I didn't want to do that. I was, you know, but but it was it was the fanciest. I mean, the bathrooms were so clean. I almost wanted to use the bathroom there just because it was so clean. To take a nap. Yeah, no, to take a nap in the bat in the <laughs> stall. It was so nice. So people are very friendly there. And uh, but the only the, the, the one problem is it does. It's just like if you ever have an opportunity to get an upgrade on a flight, it is very hard to go back. I think it'd be very hard for me to go back on a public course. You'll just you'll never be able to play golf again. No, I don't think so. Retire. But let, let me say this though. Let me say this, and it got me thinking. You know. For other Sub Beacon listeners out there who belong to prestigious clubs, I will play. I will contact me. If you're in the Washington area, I will play. For, I will offer repartee. That's I'm good at that. Repartee. Anybody, anybody who's a member at Congressional. Congressional Burning you know, Tree. If you're, you want to. Minimal fee, too. Minimal fee. I charge a minimum <laughs> fee for appearances. Appearance, I do appearance, appearance fee. I, there's an appearance fee, as you know. Okay, so anyway. I'll come along. I won't you, play golf. I'll Sonny, just come along in the you, cart. you totally downplay it. You could not have been worse than me. So right, I there's mean, a one hundred. There's a one. Well, time. considering I could barely breathe the weekend, oh, you were you were doing it. And I, you're I, turning I, your body in I weird would, ways. I would definitely. I would have been especially bad this week. But I. You were. There's. You've played with me before. You're better than me. I don't remember. And I played like. I played. Yeah, we played. We played. We went to that. Oh, that's right. And I was terrible. And I've only played like two rounds of golf since then. So I could not possibly be any better. Than I was that awful, awful experience I that we had. I could come and caddy as JBL, a former professional caddy. You were a professional caddy. I was a professional caddy in Where high school. Where were you? The Tavistock Country Club in Haddonfield, New Jersey. In Haddonfield. The worst job I ever had. In what sense? I include McDonald's. I include <laughs> telemarketing. Ooh. I include hospital orderly. Oh. There is no job I ever had that I hated more. I, I, but I think of Caddyshack the movie. It's not like that. Question. Question. Yeah. Seriously. Sunny. Question. So it's bad because because of the people you had to deal with. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's not the the work itself is not that fellow bad. caddies or players, members, the members, members the, the members, members, the members were bad. Oh, you know, I, I mean, wanted to murder all of them. I you want to know where all of my comedy class, yeah, class, yeah, yeah, class warfare, warfare stuff, yeah. stuff comes, comes from? from? It's all coming it together. It comes from being at a, mm -hmm. at a suburban country club mm -hmm. with a mm -hmm. bunch of like doctors and lawyers who thought that pharmaceutical they were... Pharmaceutical execs. No, no, not mm -hmm. pharmaceutical. This is what drove me crazy. They were suburban doctors and lawyers, mm -hmm. no offense, mm -hmm. who acted as if they mm -hmm. were out of a Tom Wolfe novel masters and were of the masters universe. Yeah. of the mm -hmm. universe. Mm -hmm. And I thought mm -hmm. to myself... I don't know. What do you make? One hundred seventy-five grand a year. You do not own a building in Manhattan, right? 
Oh God, I wow. hated them so much. Wow. Wow. I, uh, I I also worked at a country club. Did the you Fredericksburg Country Club? I did. What did uh, you do did there, Sonny? I but we they, it it did not. It's it's a small enough club that it didn't really have caddies. It was, uh, oh. but I was like shagging balls off the driving range and cleaning carts and you know making sure shagging ball. There's clubs, a great sub. There's a great quote for you. <laughs> clubs making sure clubs were clean. That's in in lockers that sort of thing. Uh, and it was actually it was actually a really solid job because it, like there was not a ton of interaction with the members and the ones who did interact with us were generally pretty nice like it was like local judges and stuff you know like like very very friendly very friendly types so i this is where i learned to love the overclass well there, there was you know. <laughs> there was a moment i remember at uh, at country club when i said to one of the uh, to one of the members as we were wrapping up, and he had shot like a one thirty seven, and oh my score, great. was like really, you know. Of course, the people who shoot the highest scores are always the ones who are the most fastidious about everything. <laughs> as if, oh God, I might right. get a one thirty eight right. if right. you don't. Right. Blah, blah. Right. I said to him, "There's a storm coming, <laughs> Mister Wayne." <laughs> Very nice. But, uh, my were fa- you wearing the cocktail dress when you said that? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, my father never belonged to a country club. He, he still prefers the public course. That's because he's a man of the people. He's a man he's of the a people. doctor of the people. And he doesn't mind getting the paired people's up. Doctor. I mean, you know how they say, oh, you're going to be joined by somebody? It's him. You know, like if you have like if you're a threesome, oh, you're going to be uh, somebody's going to join. It's usually him. Uh, I, he, for some reason, just prefers the public course. Um, but anyway, I just want to say uh, again, thank you to Dan, uh, who is extremely generous and kind, as always, as you know. Um, and also uh, Dr. Ed Wu. Very nice, very kind. I felt like I had a lot in common with him uh, because Dr. Wu, I will be seeing you in 15 years I'll be, for my cabbage. <laughs> I'll be, yeah, I'll, yes, that's right. I'll see him in five years. Uh, and, <laughs> we'll see you yeah, next in week. five years. Yes, and, and, and so uh, he is, uh, obviously, he is Asian American. I'm Asian American. He grew up in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey. He's from Wayne. Oh, Wayne. And he went to uh, uh, Penn, UPenn. And he was there for many years, and of course now he's a uh, the the head uh, cardiovascular surgeon, and I'm uh, a future patient. I'm a future patient. Okay. I don't think they can afford so, it. No, I don't think I'm really quite <laughs> like him. I guess you could say I'm more like his evil twin. Speaking of evil twins, over the weekend, oh! us us a plus really? plus. Oh, thank you. A sliced its way to the top of the box office with seventy million, followed by Captain Marvel with thirty five million, and in third place. Wonder Park with nine million, gentlemen. Box office thoughts. Us was the monster I thought it would be. Us, uh, us made a lot of money. Was it the second highest grossing original? Uh, well, it, there, there are a lot of different ways I've seen people like this. break this down. The, the the highest grossing original R rated movie, and also the original highest grossing or mm. the, the most the highest Second grossing original largest mm-hmm. opening ever for a live action original picture wow okay wow. okay yeah i mean it's it's a weird i, I it's it, but this also i i have some issues with this because it's there this is counting the passion of the christ as an adaptation oh which <laughs> strikes me as Oh, you think it's fiction? <laughs> I mean, it's well, no, it's not. It's not. I mean, it's it is kind of adapted from the the Bible, I guess. But like, or uh, from I real guess. life, the, you know, you know, whatever know. from history. Yeah. Well, Tacitus, Josephus, uh, is this going to be bigger than Get Out? Us. It would be hard for it to not gross mm-hmm. more than Get Out. I mean, look, Did here's you Get Out a tree have attrition of like twenty percent per week or something. Yeah, insane I mean, insane. like that though. Let me. Let me. Just yeah. I mean, Get Out was a over. genuine sensation. Right. Will this be the same? Well, Get, thing? Out, Get Out grossed 176 million dollars domestically. Oh, okay. I find I find it hard to believe that this won't gross yeah, 176 this will do more. million dollars this will do more, right. despite uh, domestically. But Get Out, but Get Get Out was a was a slow burn. I mean, it it only grossed only. I mean, it grossed 33 million dollars its opening weekend, yeah. which is a big number for a movie that cost five million bucks to make from a first time director with no real stars. It's amazing. I mean, and, and then after that, it was a, it had drops of 15%, mm-hmm. 26%, 35%, 34%. So it held for a long time. It had a multiple of five. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think the multiple on us is going to be? Uh, I would be, I, I mean, it's starting so high. I, I have a hard time believing it's going to be better than three. But a multiple of three on an R-rated horror film is very good, and a multiple of three on a $70 million film is a $70 million opening is extremely good. 
uh, it, it's going to gross. You know, let's say it, it grosses between two hundred and two hundred twenty-five million dollars. It means it made ten times its budget back. Mm. Um, wow. Is that good? It's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Uh, so it's how, a huge hit. It's how a huge, huge big hit. a star is Jordan Peele now? Is Jordan Peele now a name brand director in the way that Christopher Nolan and Steven Spielberg are? I yes, absolutely. And Tyler Perry. Is. I mean this this movie is one hundred. The success of this movie is one hundred percent predicated upon from Jordan Peele, the director of Get Out. Right. Uh, and right. we all know Jordan Peele, of course, is rebooting the Twilight Zone. He's like been all over the CBS. Uh, networks with Twilight Zone ads, and he is—he is like a legit. I think he is a legit name brand director that uh, can open a movie on his own, which is something that we have very, very few of. I think even Spielberg is kind of slipping out of that category. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nolan, I mean Christopher Nolan. Nolan might be the only one, right? Christopher I mean, I mean, Fincher doesn't count like that anymore. Yeah, Fincher works so infrequently now that. On a tangent, do we know what the Nolan project is or no? No. You don't even have an you don't have an inside thing, Sonny? I don't know. I have mm -hmm. no idea. Okay. All right. All right. And Tarantino. Tarantino oh, would well. be the I mean yeah. yeah, that's right. Quentin Tarantino's ninth oh. film is how they're marketing yes. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which right. is a movie that stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. I mean it's like Yeah. Um, yeah. Great trailer until people realize what the movie's about. I haven't seen the trailer. What is what is the movie about? It's about can the someone, it's can a, someone explain this? Oh story? yeah, so it's it's about the Manson murders. Oh, the Tarantino movie. I thought yeah, you were yeah, oh, get out. No, no, no. Or uh, us. Uh, us. Us. No, 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 no. Uh uh so I mean and, and it's like I it, it's a, it's a fantastic trailer and I and Margot Robbie lo looks great, but she's Sharon Tate. Do I really want to see that happen? Yeah. No. Um, I, uh, I'm curious to see what exactly they do. Right. With is it with a this. post? Is it is it them? Is Brad Pitt is supposed to be the detective? Does he figure friend, it out? A, a friend suggested me to me that it is not an inglorious bastard style uh, rewrite of history. Oh, that it will be more of a Rosencrantz and Guildenstern mm -hmm. are dead mm -hmm. periphery mm -hmm. of history. Mm -hmm. Periphery of yeah, they're, they're there because I so. think they're probably the neighbors in the canyon. Yeah, anyway, something like something that, like yeah. that, and Captain Marvel has made now a trillion dollars. Is that correct? Captain Marvel nine hundred ten million, I believe, worldwide uh, as of the weekend. I okay. actually don't know what it's at right now. Mm -hmm. Let me let me mm -hmm. just pull it up mm -hmm. real quick. Yeah, uh, nine hundred eighteen as of March twenty sixth. Uh, can't believe it's not at nine fifty. I mean, the yeah. world we live in that doesn't let a great film like this <laughs> get to nine hundred fifty million yes. in only eighteen days. Yes. I was. Is, it's just. Why don't we have roles, strong female leads anymore? It's really what has shame. happened? It's really. It's really a shame. It's, I'm very I, concerned. Uh, it's funny. It's I funny. was. I was doing my kind of standard tweeting about the box office this weekend and noted that Captain Marvel is not holding particularly well. It's not holding poorly exactly. It dropped fifty five percent, which is about, which is on the high end of the Marvel movies, but not not outrageously so. And it dropped another fifty percent this weekend. Um, you compare that to Wonder Woman or. Black Panther or these other kind of real phenomenon. Aquaman. Aquaman. <laughs> God help Aquaman. us. <laughs> well, Aquaman. Aquaman made most of its money, or it held pretty well. Aquaman held well. Mm -hmm. uh, Aquaman. Well, I. You know my theory on Aquaman that Aquaman was filling the Star Wars spot. Yes. From this December, because Star Wars foolishly released a movie in May instead That's of right. December. That's right. So Aquaman was just kind of absorbing that that Christmas season blockbuster energy. Uh, so I, I, you know, I'm not, I, I, but it's, it's not, it's not holding particularly well. It's not holding particularly terribly. It's just having kind of average drops. And I, yeah. you know, I, the reason for this is that it's not particularly good. And people were just angry at me. On oh, Twitter. I bet. Like, how dare you? Yep. Too many white how dare men you, going to movies. How dare you suggest that this movie is not good? How dare you suggest it's not the biggest success ever? Like, it's, I mean, it's making a ton of money. I, it's going to make a billion dollars, like I said. Uh, Why do you hate this movie so much, Sonny? What I, about I, I it do threatens hate this you? Movie. I don't know. It probably has something to do with the fact that it's about a woman. I think it's <laughs> the fact that a woman. A lady hero. A lady hero. I just can't handle it. I can't handle it, man. B plus. Anyway, uh, Sonny, uh, so uh, did we? Did we all see us? JVL, one hundred percent. No, I. The two of you I'm tried so, to uh, troll I'm, me into going I'm to see not, it. I'm so disappointed. In you. So I'm so hey, disappointed in you. It's not that scary. It's, it's not really that not scary. scary. It's not. And I was like, yeah, that's. It's a, not. That I said. Scary. I believe I texted you back the Admiral Akbar gif. Yeah, it's, it's a trap. A trap. It's not that scary. It's not that scary. It's not. I was expecting scary, and after a while, you get it sort of acclimated to it, and you're like, oh, okay. So you did not see it. Sonny, 
How about a uh, real review? Then? Okay. So Us is the latest film from Jordan Peele, as we just discussed. Uh, it is about a family that goes on vacation to the beach. Uh, but before we get to that, there's a prelude of sorts where we're, it's 1986 and... The this girl is watching a Hands Across America ad right on a on a sh- if you if you pay attention to the the movie it is filled with these little Easter eggs because Jordan Peele is very much kind of a nerd who likes to have his little references so the the Hands Across America ad is playing on you know kind of an old school tube TV uh, as one would expect in 1986 and on the shelf next to the TV there are VHS tapes one of which is Goonies one of which is Chud uh, Chuds Chud or Chuds. The cannibalistic humanoid underground yes. dwellers, uh, Very which good. is which is a which is kind of both of these films are kind of a hint as to what is coming. Um, there's a we're going underground. We're going underground here, folks. Uh, so anyway, uh, starts off as a, this prelude in the 1980s. This girl goes to a, a, a boardwalk amusement park and is gets separated from her parents. Wanders into a hall of mirrors, sees herself, but it's not a reflection. It's her. Uh, and then we cut, we cut f- into the future. Wait, I'm sorry, it's not a reflection, it's her? It's oh. not a reflection, it's her. <laughs> what does that mean? It's the, it's like her, she, it's like a double. It's, you know yeah, what the, It's not a mirror. It's not a mirror. It's not a mirror. Okay. It's like it's her. actual okay. second. The girl, girl. the yes. girl, there's two versions, there's okay. two of the girls. I see. In the, in the room. Understood. So, uh, so the, we cut, we cut forward to present day the this girl has grown up her family is headed back to the santa cruz beach that's where it was and uh, they she doesn't want to go down to the beach she still has kind of some lingering trauma over whatever happened to her in that hall of mirrors uh and her family kind of guilts her into it they go to the beach they're hanging out with their annoyingly wealthy white friends uh played wonderfully by tim heidecker and elizabeth moss i'm a huge fan of tim heidecker just in general and I'm glad that he is given something really to do here. Usually in movies, he is a little more than a bit player who people are like, hey, look, it's Tim Heidecker. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Tim Heidecker, is a, 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 he, he is for the last, I don't know, 15 or 20 years, been kind of this weird Dadaist comedian on c- the Cartoon Network. There's a show called okay. Tim, and, Tim and Eric. Awesome show. Great job. Very weird. Very funny. Uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Anyway, so uh, the, the family then goes home. Uh, the the African American family goes home. They they uh, are settling down for the night, and uh, another family shows up in their driveway. A family of doubles, and we this is it's, this is when the horror starts. There's uh, <laughs> there's some there's some there's some there's some tormenting of the family. They put them all in a room, and the the uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what the character's name is. Adelaide, her double, uh, it, who was played by Lupita Nyong'o, both both characters, Lupita Nyong'o. Is she the uh, oldest daughter? Is she the wife? What What is she? Lupita Nyong'o is the, the girl grown old. The girl right. from the so original. So she's now the mother She's of the now family. the mother of the family. Mm-hmm. She's the mother. Understood. Um, uh, talks to the doubles and they're like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Who are you? And the double Lupita responds, we're Americans. <laughs> so here's the, this is, they're all dressed in like prison garb. They're dressed in like prison overalls. They all are like, uh, they've they've been forced to live underground and as as trolls and they're eating cold rabbit meat for their meals and they're given toys that hurt them and it's like a it's this the the metaphor of this movie is that the underclass is going to come up and uh, and murder the the overclass. This is why I think you would have really enjoyed the film JBL. <laughs> in addition to it being funny, and it is funny, it is, it is funny. legitimately funny throughout. Yeah, I haven't really moments. talked about we'll get to the, that. Yeah, the yeah, humor, yeah. the humor in the film, and it is it is funny. It is funny throughout. Winston Duke is very funny. He's uh, He's Tim great. Heidecker again, very funny. Elizabeth Moss doesn't do a ton for me, but she's okay here. Um, there movie is very funny it is very much about class warfare this is not a movie about race in the way that get out was i don't think um this is much more about class uh struggle um to the point that should we can we go full spoilers here okay spoilers we're gonna go full let's, spoilers let's, uh, i i can't have a conversation if you don't we all so. we always go full spoilers so it turns out that in the hall of mirrors remember the girl sees herself well, it turns out that the girl from the underground uh, kidnapped the, the, the girl from the overground and chained her up downstairs in the underground basement evil you know, lair where all these doubles hang out. Uh, 
and came up herself and she she is living with the family so the family so she is the mother she so the mother yes. the mother in that we have we have watched throughout is actually the evil double they pulled the switcheroo pull the so old, she should be surprised by any of this well yes so we'll get we'll get to this in a second uh, so she pulls the switcheroo and the the girl f- who had lived in the above ground and who had lived in the world of comfort and luxury uh, is now forced to live amongst the tormented underclass. And she throws off their blinders and destroys their false consciousness and leads them up in a rebellion against the 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 overclasses. It's very much it's it's very, very Marxist. And it's very much uh, a reminder that the the, uh, you know, uh, revolutions always come from the wealthy, basically led by the wealthy against other wealthy people. Anyway, uh, so y- this is the, the the problem with the movie is that none of this makes any sense, really. Yeah, I have none a lot of, this, of questions. I'll ask later. None of this makes any sense. The, there's no explanation really for what the doubles are. Uh, they're called tethers in this yeah, they're, film. They're, 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 they're tethered. They're, right? there's some. There's some. There's they some share suggestion. a soul because they share a soul. Well, that's what they say. But like, how does that work exactly? There, there's some suggestion that there was a there was an experiment, a cloning experiment, that they could create the the body but not the soul, and they share the soul and. They're when they're underground, they're doing all the same things as the people above ground, just kind of in pantomime. And it's it, it's whatever. It, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't actually if you give it 10 seconds of thought, the whole movie falls down for reasons like shouldn't the mother have known about this awful underground <laughs> horror society right. that she has condemned her seven her previous seven year old self to and yeah. maybe maybe she would uh, avoid going back to that area at all yeah. ever and you never do it there's um, there's truth in the bumper stickers keep santa cruz weird yeah and there you go uh and i mean yeah. like so there's 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 that problem there there's just the the fact that none of it really makes any sense as a fable as kind of a horror fable about the um the ways that we ignore poverty and suffering around us I think it's pretty effective. I think it's more or less effective. Um, but, you know, your mileage may vary on this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So in the end, did you like it? I did. I did. I actually did. I thought, again, I thought it, it's a very effective comedy movie with horror elements. Okay. Um, okay. It is, it is, it is, it, it sacrifices scares for laughs, mm-hmm. which friends mm-hmm. of mine who are very much horror buffs were annoyed by this movie. They were like, well, you know. That is he, not what the trailer promised. He will, I know. The, it's oh, yeah. very different Absolutely. from the trailer. Absolutely. Very different very, from the trailer. Very different from the trailer. My, I, horror buff friends of mine were annoyed by the film because it, it sacrifices scares and suspense and tension for, for jokes. For it jokes. Will, it will, it, 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 That's Jordan exactly Peele right. is always happy to, in this film at least, is, is very mm-hmm. happy to uh, trade a uh, trade actual suspense for a quick laugh, which is fine. I I, I like it. Some people don't, um, and this is why I was trying to. I was I'm, I was not just we're trolling. Not trolling. I am dead serious Absolutely that serious. you you would have been would scared have been probably because mm-hmm. it is it it does have it is a scary you. movie. But it is it is very it's very funny. It is right. not the it is not the horror the horrifying experience that is promised from the, the from the trailer. And the no, I, I I agree with Sonny. Uh, I found it to be very entertaining, but in terms of horror, I thought it totally lacked teeth. Speaking of teeth, JVL. One of the most important things we do for our health every day is brushing our teeth. Yet most of us don't do it properly. I mean, not me, of course. I do it perfectly. Um, Quip is a better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers. Quip was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and even enjoyable. Here's why I love Quip, and you will too. Sensitive sonic vibrations are gentle enough on your sensitive gums. Most people brush too hard, and some electric toothbrushes are too abrasive, but not Quip. It has a built-in two-minute timer that pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides, which helps guide you to a full and even clean. A multi-use cover mounts to your mirror and unmounts to slide over your bristles for on-the-go brushing. It's actually great help for when you're traveling. Quip is a very, very good travel toothbrush. You get into your hotel room. You always want to know, where do I put my toothbrush that isn't disgusting? Uh, You just use the mount from Quip and you... (laughs) right onto the mirror with it. Great sound uh, effect. The brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5. 
Did you know that three out of four of you people out there use bristles that are old, worn out, and ineffective? Which is also bad because over time the bristles sharpen and when you use old bristles, they're actually bad for your gums and can rub away the uh, enamel in your teeth. Um, so don't do that. You should, you should replace your brush heads every three uh, months. The, uh, this is why we love Quip. They are backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash subbeacon, no hyphen, just S-U-B-B-E-A-C-O-N right now, you get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at G-E-T Q-U-I-P dot com slash subbeacon. Getquip dot com slash subbeacon. Thank you, JVL. Uh, so after listening to Sonny, are you persuaded now to watch the movie? Hard pass. What, 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 what did what your children think of it, Victor? You know? <laughs> My daughter thought there were parts that were kind of scary, but kind of funny, too. Also, what's with the scissors, she said. No, I didn't. I, I went alone, uh, but uh, it was a crowded theater, and there were a lot of laughs in that theater. And I, again, as Sonny mentioned, I thought that Winston Duke kind of stole the show. I mean, he was very funny. So, I mean, it's like... It's meant to be disturbing, but I think it's that disturbing and uh, not as scary as uh, early on. I'm bracing for it, and it, it paces well in the very beginning when she walks into the Hall of Mirrors in that scary place. And and for those of us who are familiar with boardwalks, there, you know, the boardwalk is fun, but boardwalks it's also creepy. It, but it's also creepy because the, no, it's no offense to the people who you know. I'm not going to say I'm not comparing They're to all carnies. carnies. They're yeah, all it's a different carnies. world. It's a different world, is what I'm saying. And uh, I mean, for some people, it's a summer job. Uh, a lot of my friends, but you know, uh, other aspects of it are kind of like with the people who operate the machines, you know, and those weird, scary houses. Uh, if you remember the haunted house. Brigantine Castle. Oh, bro. You can't. You go, go to YouTube and type in Brigantine. Could not pay me oh, enough no. to I'm, go I'll to agree to this day. I'll, uh, to this day. Uh, it, it horrified me. They played Box Takata. Right. Right on the commercial. And it was scary because it was humans. It's not a robe. It's humans. It's humans in there who are going to scare you. And my sister told me that they chase you into the parking lot. I... It could be true, but the commercial was great because there was always a very bouncy woman running out, like with her pink T-shirt, and I thought that was very funny. But it was, and they're like, "Oh, you have to kill them with the, you know, like a drive a stake through the vampire's heart." I mean, really crazy stuff. Go onto YouTube and just type in Brigantine Castle. How do you it's spell that? Brigantine, B R I, like the town, G A N T I N E. It's the um, first town north of Atlantic City in New Jersey. Yes. And How on earth what, would I know what that is? <laughs> because. Every, Everybody Whatever. knows Brigantine. Uh, JVL and the but provincial. Remember, there are two. There are two. There were two uh, scary castles on the on the Jersey Shore. One was Brigantine. Don't forget the other one, the Castle at Long Branch. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The Castle. See, that Long was outside Branch. of my sphere of yeah, influence. That's up there. And one of them, I think, was uh, that was your home castle. Uh, yes, that, and, and of course, there was the haunted house, uh, the famous, infamous on haunted house at uh, Great Adventure that burned down and people died. Killed like 30 people. I yeah, think. because they yeah. had the fake exit signs. Much like in uh, us, there's a fake. I think she thinks she sees the uh, the exit sign. Well, she walks not... into a mirror. Exactly. She sees it in a mirror. You can imagine that in reality how uh, much of a nightmare that is uh, in case there's a fire and there was. But I remember uh, friends who had gone in before the fire and they said, you know, what ha I said, so what happens? They said, well, you know, some guy... Will like you know he, he, fill he, you up? Yeah, no, that's what it is. Was. They dip their hands in ice cold water to scare you, and then uh, I grab. But it's dark, so I, I guess I accidentally grabbed a, a boob or a butt cheek, and you do that, and you get paid. Accidentally. Yeah, accidentally. and you get paid to do that all day. Yeah, she and feels. Then die. Yeah, Victor, did you in like Jersey. it? Yeah, I, I give it a B plus. But here's the thing. So I said, oh, this was kind of an entertaining movie. I have a ton of questions that make it weird. And once you start, you know, thinking about it, as you said, yeah. Sonny, the whole thing falls apart. Was it more along the Black Mirror? Slash uh, Twilight Zone axis, and then it is along the horror axis. Is that what I mean? Because this is what like yeah, I horror mean, it's, weird. it's closer. It's, weird. it's, it's closer. closer. It's, weird. it's closer to Twilight Zone than Black Mirror. I mean, Black Mirror is always about technology. But I mean, I had no idea about. I didn't. I you know, I wasn't familiar with W. E. B. Du Bois's Double Consciousness as a driving force for George. I, I, I'm sorry, I just went in to see scary movie. Vic, you know, Vic started reading some of the think pieces afterwards, and that was <laughs> that was a mistake. It hurt my he head. went down that rabbit my, hole. My head hurt uh, from reading think pieces. Uh, but uh, I have lots of questions. Go uh, for it. Okay, where did the doppelgangers get their clothes? Great question. No idea. <laughs> 
No idea. Kmart. Does it does it just materialize? Well, this is this is so they're all like wearing kind of the same thing. Yes, but yes, I, they are. no one no one really explains where those do they okay. change every morning? What do they eat? apparently do they, they eat the they rabbit eat, food? They, there's the so, rabbits. no they eat rabbits. So there's like a there's like a, a bunch of cages filled with rabbits and like one in, in one shot we see them walking past a kind of cafeteria looking place oh, where oh, they're oh, like okay. they're like ripping a lot apart the live rabbits and like oh, just eating the, the how yeah. does the underworld economy work <laughs> great question we don't know there is no there is no there is no underground economy they just suffer at some point in the movie sonny they emerge uh the family emerges onto like the streets and it's empty like 28 days later empty well there's some bodies on the ground there are bodies yeah. so my, my thought was are they the only families that were able to successfully fight back against people with scissors well i was i was kind of curious about this myself given the uh, per capita gun ownership in america the idea that a bunch of scissor wielding they only had scissors scissor wielding maniacs would be able to emerge from the tunnels underneath our our streets and uh kill large numbers of people strikes me as well i mean they, they would probably they'd certainly be able to kill some people but they're all wearing the same thing so as soon as you see uh these guys wandering around the streets with their 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 scissors run you just you you, you could really just start shooting question yes w what is their goal their goal what, their motivation is to what their goal is to create raise awareness. So this is actually one of the clever things in the movie. I think is so. As I said, it starts with a Hands Across America, a commercial, right? And the the knock on Hands Across America is that it's this it's this thing to raise awareness for homelessness in America, right? But it was nonsense. It didn't actually do anything. It was silly. Um, and at the, Quaker school, don't tell us that. Yeah. man, it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. it was a big deal. So, like, but this this idea of raising awareness. So when the, when the when the tethers when the doubles come up from the underground, they kill a bunch of people, and then they start their own hands across America chain. And this is actually kind of clever because you know you know what isn't going to change anything is holding hands across America. You know what might change some things is murdering a bunch of people. Uh, and then holding hands across America. <laughs> it's like, it, it is very much, it is very much, this is, again, I really think you would have, in, there is a lot yeah. for you to I would enjoy this reading this about film. this movie. Um, so does I, the, does the kid like walk upside down like a spider crab or something in it? Because I thought that, that one image alone was enough to, no, like, but he does, he, he like kind of does this like on fours, but like let, more like a dog than mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. backwards mm -hmm. spider crab. Uh, okay. Uh, another, another question I have, uh, Sonny, uh, or like Gollum. He looks more like Gollum. 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 Yeah. Yes. Do these clones have superpowers? Are they like? Do they have superhuman strength Unclear. or speed? Unclear. Uh, well, they they seem to be like us, but somewhat better. I don't know. It's hard. Mine to... is they have no verbal skills. Yeah, they they can't talk. The only one who talks is uh, the, the girl mm -hmm. the, who who went. They Adelaide. can't talk. They, they just make they moaning noises. They groan noises. and grunt like the zombies. Can they be Come. killed? Yes. Yes. How how must they be killed? They just die like humans. Uh, but like but humans. it takes several attempts. It's not. They definitely definitely seems stronger than than normal humans. Yes. But they they can be killed. Mm -hmm. well, uh, one, one another weakness with this movie, and this is also true of Get Out, is that Jordan Peele seems very reluctant to kill anyone who we like. Yeah, in I, the movie. I appreciate that, especially if you're going to kill a family. I yeah, including, so there's no yeah. there's no the, the while while the family is in danger. Uh, none of them die, and the people who do die are people we are like trained to dislike, like Tim Elizabeth Heidecker's Moss. family, and yeah, Elizabeth even Moss, even yeah. yeah, and the daughters, and, and, and her, his his family's daughters. Normally, you think got, oh, you're going to kill two girls. girls. It's terrible, but they've got twin girls, and they're very annoying. They're very Valley Girl mm -hmm. annoying, and it's fine when they die because they're annoying. It's fine when all of these people die because they're annoying, but we don't want to. We don't want to kill our our people because they're yeah. they're not annoying. So you know, I didn't feel disturbed by that versus a movie like I remember watching in Bruges. Uh, and 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 a kid dies, and I was so disturbed by that on a plane uh, in the confessional. If you remember, it was an accidental shooting. Oh, right, right. And I, I mean, it bothered me for the rest of the trip. And uh, this one here is like ah, they, you know, and they're getting killed with scissors. So there's a lot of blood spray. Yeah, there is, but, but the, the blood ah, is all shot from kind of a distance. It it's is not. Blurry. It's not super gory. Mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. you see it. You see. Yeah. You see you violence don't... happen, but it's not a right, lot of like right. question spurting. JVL. The doppelganger of the girl who becomes the wife. Yes. Why can she talk if none of the doppelgangers from below can talk? When she comes up from the underground, she can't. There's like a scene where they talk about how she has been she's been silent for months now. 
And I guess she learns. I don't know. And it sounds like this. Right? That's how she sounds like? Well, that's how the... That's oh, yeah. How that's the, what we're talking about? N- well, the, <laughs> the, the girl from the above ground who goes underground sounds oh, right. like that. Yeah. The girl from the underground who comes to the above ground sounds normal. Who are we rooting for in that conflict? Well, this is a great question. JBL, do you believe in justice and equality? <laughs> well, I'm, I, I suppose I'm asking you. Who? Because then I can know I'm supposed to root for the opposite. I don't. I don't know. I mean, right. do you, tell me. Who, oh, or me? I'll tell no, you. I'm the rooting for the, the, who, who, for the upper class you're, you're, humans. You're, 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 you're for but the, which one is the upper class <laughs> of the of the girl? The right, our, our doppelganger. Girl. Oh, which one is the that's true? a good question. Yeah. I yeah, would, I guess, the other one's been turned. I, I guess I'm asking still... who is Jordan Peele's sympathy with in this moment. I think, but with both. I think I think Jordan sim- I think Jordan Peele is very sympathetic to the the plight of the underclass in this film. Yeah, but I also think he is sympathetic to the the family that we 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 know and love and see. Um, probably more sympathetic to the family that we know and love and see, but also understanding of the rage, murder, class warfare. Hmm. Uh, JVL, you mentioned in passing just now about uh, Hands Across America in when you were at Morristown Friends. Morristown Friends, do you you Haddonfield remember Friends? Oh, Haddonfield sorry? Friends. Oh, Haddonfield Friends. Yes, yes very Quaker of you. Speaking of horror movies, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you remember it well. Oh yeah. I wasn't it. Your... I believe we actually ended homelessness for an hour or two. Oh good. I rem- do you remember the video, the song, and the video? I remember Barishnikov. Yeah. And the ballerinas. Oh, yes. And it was such a great music. I think it's United We Stand, Divided We Fall, I think is the, that's basically the whole song. Uh, did you believe that literally we were going to have hands literally across the contiguous uh, states, a uh, continental United States? Yes. Coast to coast. Yes. yes. Okay. And I was I got news for you with how they were going to like bridge the Mississippi River. Right, I suppose right, they could right. use a bridge. You have a bridge, and uh, yeah. yes, I, and the Rocky Mountains, mm-hmm. how yeah, gonna, the desert, uh, traverse that. And all. So I believe we were going to, but of course, I believed all sorts of things that the Quakers sold me, like in the United Nations and oh, yeah, the sure. undersea cities that the Scholastic Reader promised us we were actually by the year two thousand <laughs> we would all be living on kelp. That was manufactured and grown by undersea cities, and we would all have rocket packs and flying cars. And you know, the undersea I, cities were like I giant bubbles, really like giant bubbles. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. believe me, I bought all sorts of things from the Quakers, and uh, and uh, trick or treating for UNICEF, which is a thing that's we still, did that, for the Quakers. That still happens, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I believe okay. in that. Did okay. you believe? Yeah, that yes, it was really good? I thought. And when I found that it didn't, yeah, happen, well, that's the thing is because even does, it, does people, it break in? Did it break in like the Rockies? No, no, it broke it was like everywhere. Certain sections. It was certain Whole sections. states had yeah. like nobody there. But there there's great nobody. You could, you could, there are not literally enough people mm-hmm. to do hands mm-hmm. across Iowa. No, like like or Nebraska. There are not enough people living ship in Nebraska people in? to do this. They didn't, they didn't ship people in to no. fill the gaps. Uh, the, Is this the moment when you were first disillusioned? No, the first disillusionment actually was. I think I've written about this. Was Reagan's election? Um, funnily enough, because. <laughs> No, this is a, this is like a oh, non political had... point. So my my parents both. I remember asking them. I was like six yeah. when the nineteen eighty election. You know why 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 what, you know, they were really Carter supporters mm-hmm. and you know why and they said well if Ronald Reagan's elected then then you know we're gonna have nuclear war and I thought to myself huh well that means that Ronald Reagan will get zero votes <laughs> because if, if who would want if that like, right who wants that who and wants and in fact we did a a an election. Uh, in in our Quaker school, where uh, I believe Reagan got four votes school wide mm-hmm. at my Quaker school, one one of whom I believe was my best friend, um, and so I just assumed. Okay, I mean, I did not as a six year old. Mm-hmm. I didn't fully understand statistics, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I did believe that if you know, say ninety nine point nine percent of this sample size was going one way, then it was probably improbable that when you expanded out to three hundred million mm-hmm. or extrapolated seventy million, that this sample could be so skewed that it would turn out to be wrong. And I couldn't believe it the mm-hmm. next morning when I woke up mm-hmm. and found out that Ronald Reagan had won. Had won, and I'm yeah. very very worried. Mm-hmm. And then it turns out there was no nuclear war. <laughs> And that's that's when I immediately began suspecting. Wait a minute. Some every, of the things everyone I was, was lying to you. Some all of the, the things time. that I was being yeah. sold. Okay, I would say. <laughs> all right. Yeah. You asked us to rank scariest movies. Do we still want to do that? I I very much want to do this. I I okay. asked you guys each to, and I even put together my own ranking oh, as well. But we I would just be go to very, yours first. JVL. Very interested. 
I don't. Let's, let's I, go I did clockwise. I, frankly, I, I didn't. It. I didn't do this because I didn't do this because I I don't really have a good list. And this is this is I was I sat down to do it last night and I was like I can't really oh I come made a up list. with a good list here because I don't I, I like I just I wasn't sure on what access we were talking about if it's jump scares versus like tension. But I have I have like a I have a non ranked list to to offer up and the reasons why they scared me. So okay, I would take not, that. Okay. Go ahead. Go. Oh, yeah. Sunny. Go. Uh, the, the, the movie that scared me the most, I remember in, uh, I guess, right after high school is when it came out, was The Ring. I found, oh, yeah. I found The Ring <laughs> to be it? terrifying. The She's Sarah scary. Yeah, she, American no, 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 that's no, The Grudge. The, that's The no. Grudge. Well, the, the, Ring the, is, the Japanese one or the American the version? American the American one. She the comes out of the well. With, with Naomi Watts. Right, um, uh, Ringu. Terrifying. I found it terrifying. I found it. I found the whole thing. This creepy video, uh, and the way it keeps matching up with things in the real world, and then obviously the girl crawling out of the TV yeah. after you think that she has been defeated. Um, and then the was, zooming. The zooming effect was new. Like, the zooming. Yeah. Right. Well, that zooming effect was new, but also just like the the fact that they don't show the effects of the the seeing the ghost until like right at the end with it yeah. what they, are the it effects does, of seeing the ghost? It, it just like it turns the scott speedman or whatever into this like weirdly grotesque like uh-huh. his face is all distorted and <laughs> yeah i'm doing like, the oh. face now but you got sadly you can't see uh, it. it's pretty terrible the whole <laughs> the i'm whole not doing thing, the face now the whole thing the mood the mood the 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 i i found i found the ring to be incredibly effective and scary so interesting that, jvl go so I I have an age adjusted ranking. Okay. So I'm ranking them basically on how scared I was mm-hmm. at the time of my life when mm-hmm. I was seen. Mm-hmm. And so for me, and I I would say I realized something midway through making this list. I realized what was going on, and you guys will probably pick up on it yourselves. Uh, for me, the scariest movie ever was Bambi. I saw it when I was five. My parents were still together, and it opens with a mother being murdered by a <laughs> man with a face. gun. And, and the hunters are combing the woods in an attempt to exterminate Bambi's entire line. And I just found that effing terrifying. Number two, Halloween. I was in fifth grade. I was going to a school called Haddonfield Friends, which okay. was oh, set yeah, in yeah, Haddonfield. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. Legit. Number three, Faces of Death. At that point, I was in seventh oh, grade, that's snuff. and I had just that's snuff. I had just left Quaker school for the public schools. Uh-huh. Who rented it? Well, this is what Chris all the, no, no, no. But this was what all the savages in the public school were talking about, and so like my first experience with mass culture of like the public school proletarians. <laughs> Were, were these kids who were all like, you know, gotta see it, gotta see it, gotta see it. And I, and mm-hmm. this is what, and they loved it. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. found it terrifying that this is what, I was like, I am not like these animals. Were they, okay. Um, number four, stepfather. I was in eighth grade at that point. My parents had split up and it was a story of this psychopath who goes around marrying single mothers and then murdering oh. them and their children. Oh. Uh, and then number five is misery, at which point I was in 11th grade. There's this controlling older woman who uses a sledgehammer a to keep a writer from escaping her house. And all of these movies are actually about my family life. And this is, I'm, I'm, this isn't shtick. Like all yeah. of the, what scared the crap out of me in every one of these sequences was that they were really about the things I was experiencing in my terrible home life. Um, and so I, this, is, this is why I don't do scary movies. Mm-hmm. Like I had a lousy enough childhood. I don't need. Mm-hmm. I don't need to like go and pay somebody money to scare me. You just turned this into a very special episode. Um, no, wow. I, didn't, I didn't mean to no, about it. But this profound. is, okay. anyway. So, Fascinating. Victor, I bet I know what your scariest movie is, though. I oh. don't want to. I don't want to blow. But when you get okay. to number right. one, right. let yeah, me yeah, guess yeah, yeah. number okay. one okay. for okay. you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, five. Salem's Lot. Uh, was that a TV movie? The Toby Hooper one. Real... The one. Yeah. I. It's the one where the kid is scratching the glass on the wall. You let me back in, and the. You know, the, the, it's, it's the town of vampires, right? I mean, it's Stephen yeah. King. So, I saw that when I was young. That's scary. Uh, I just. I just think that's scary. Uh, n- number four. Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, the the first death I think is Tina, and then you see her reappear only to the girl, and she's in a body bag, and that was kind of like a, a novel. I didn't was not familiar with body bag really until like that movie, and it's the transparent body bag. I mean, it's just disturbing. And then Johnny Depp's death. I I really like Johnny Depp in that movie, and so when he died, because eventually you're gonna go fall asleep, it was horrific. I it was one of the few times in my life that I actually. Um, yeah, that, that I actually turned away. Um, and then uh, The Omen, 
mm-hmm. right? Which is very scary. Uh, open water. Because, yeah, because I mean, that's something you could find yourself in. Uh-huh. I mean, that's very realistic. That's the whole class of yeah, yeah, yeah. like that, okay. the ski lift mm-hmm. movie. And go ahead. Number one. Exorcist. No, Hard Candy with Ellen Page and Patrick Wilson. <laughs> No comment. Okay. Uh, you know what? It's worth your investment of time. We're running late. So let me just We're say, speaking late. of investments, Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission free. While other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees so you could trade stocks and keep all of your profits. Plus, there is no account minimum deposit needed to get started so you could start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy-to-understand charts and market data and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections, such as 100 Most Popular. With Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio. Discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners of the sub of the sub beacon a free stock like Apple Ford or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. Sign up at subbeacon.robinhood.com. Uh, no corrections or additions. So uh, that's all the time uh, that we're giving to this episode. Questions, comments, and complaints. Compliments. Tweet us at Victorina Mattis at Sunny Bunch. Again, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. Just type in Subbeacon at a podcast. We're there. Leave a review. Tell your friends. Until next time. You uh, have an outtake, but before we do yeah, the outtake, please, quick. Uh, again, another thanks to the Nikachu. These shirts, I'm just folding them Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so Really, great. really nice. I can't really wait to wear fantastic. it. Especially Got Gout. Yeah. Got Gout. is brilliant. Um, I just wanted to say a uh, uh, a friend tells me uh, who is uh, well sourced <clears throat> that uh, my favorite one of my favorite burger places that closed down in the northern Virginia area. I'm not going to name the name because I have been able to uh, prove it. I said it's a shame that the place closed down. They serve great burgers, and he said, "You know why it closed down? It was a front for prostitution, right here." All these trolley. No, I'm not going to say what it is, but it's. Excuse me, it's not that. And I brought my kids there, and I thought, oh my gosh! But you know what? I was always trying to figure out. Uh, Kate and I were always uh, fascinated by the older woman hostess who uh, let us in, and there was something about her because she was older. La- she was an older lady, but she had this way about her. And uh, you realize now the way about her is she's a madam. You know, it's that w- the way she talked. And what Kate you, said to me, what are, "Where, where, where what were people doing on? it? Were I, they you're not going to believe this? You're not going to. The... I don't know." But then, and Kate said, "I always thought she was nicer to you than me," is what she said. And I said, "And they, and they, and they served." Uh, great burgers i said yeah the the meat temperature was always perfect 98.6 <laughs> what is still, i don't understand what this is i don't understand any of this it's it's fine it's fine i'm ending this I'm just cutting it off <laughs> <laughs>